This is a Brawl Network production. You're listening to the Warriors Brawl Podcast. Curry, long distance, puts it in. Stephen Curry with another. They do have a timeout. Decide not to use it. Curry, way downtown. Bang! Bang! Oh, what a shot from Curry! Here are your hosts, comedians, and Golden State Warrior diehard fans, Eli and Derek. Baby, we back. We are back. For we're brawling. Another episode. We're brawling like two grannies at the mall, brawl. fighting over a parking space. No. Some good, some bad uh, stuff that's happened to the Warriors in the past yeah. week. Yeah. Um, let's start with the good. Uh, could you possibly be talking about those fifty-seven points? <laughs> That step draws. Well, we we lost that game, so we that's lost not, the game. That's not really good. We lost the game. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, but I got it. Yeah. The good is Steph Curry looks like he did in 2016. Yeah. He's, he's fuego right now. Was there any doubt? I didn't doubt it. But a lot of people are like, oh, he's going to be 33. This is the decline. Oh, can he do it without uh, Greg Thompson? Shut up. Damien and Lillard is better. No, no disrespect to Dane. Great player. Steph's but just greater. He's on a nu- this guy is on another level. I mean, right now he's averaging twenty nine point six points a game. Good enough for second in the league. Uh, Who's he behind? He's oh, he's behind Bill. Right, probably right because Bradley no, Bill yeah. had, he had that tear of forty point games because there's no yeah, one yeah, else yeah. on his team. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, about six uh, assists per game. Yeah. Shooting 42.9% from three. That is pretty good. That's pretty good. That's and pretty good. 48.7% from the field. Now, That's pretty good. Th- these are great numbers. But I want to say this. And this is, this is typical of the Steph Curry way. Like, he usually starts off his seasons pretty slow. And then as it continues, he gets into rhythm and everything starts to go up because – you know, a lot of these stats are from the you know the first couple of games when he wasn't shooting particularly well. Lately, man, this guy has been lights out. I mean, when he scored fifty seven, what was he like seven or like eleven of thirteen or fourteen from three? Like yeah. just insane off the charts video game shit. Yeah, you know, video game mode is my favorite stuff. But like he 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 is a shooter, man. So I had no doubt. Like once he got back healthy, he yeah. could put up these kind of numbers. And I think that it's interesting, too, because, uh, you know, also he seems to have put on some muscle this year. Like, he seems a little more jacked than he has in recent years. And yeah. uh, Hitting you know, the weight room a little bit. What's that? Hitting the weight room right. a little bit. Well, he had a lot of off time. That's exactly. But, <laughs> but I think it's what he needed because he's able to sort of barrel into the, the lane a little bit easier. I don't Dude. get as nervous about his legs or him getting pushed around. That or end one last night? <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Get behind the back. It's what the is circus it? shot. <laughs> it is. I mean, yeah, it's insane. He's on a tear, man. Like, um, it's a damn shame them injuries happen. Maybe yeah. you would, uh, instead of losing three out of five, would have been maybe four out of one, four out of five, or maybe at least one more than you lost of that run. Right. But, yeah, Steph, it's not his fault at all. He is on his game. Yeah, I mean it's so fun to watch. He's the he's the most fun player to watch in the NBA. I don't care what the fuck anybody says, uh, and he's just yeah he's playing with confidence. He's more fun to watch than um, Steve Kerr. He's playing with the most strength and confidence that he's ever seen, which is insane because he's already been MVP like twice, <laughs> right? And he's already had like insane amount of confidence. Had but three the sh- rings. There's shimmies galore. He's having fun. He does the little finger guns a lot. Like <laughs> I like the four point play stuff when he's going. Yeah. And he counts the fourth one even before he shoots the free throw because he's that good. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. And I just, you know, so it's much like, fun to watch, God, man. God, I'm going to keep saying, knock on wood, Clay comes back close to what he was because yeah. we'll be right back in it. Well, what, like, 
But like, look at Durant had the Achilles, and um, what uh, John Wall had a major injury. I think he had an Achilles too, didn't? Yeah, he? and like, cause that's cause like, well, Michael Wilbon, who is like, him and Tony Kornheiser are like the gods of like sports for me. Right. They're like so so knowledgeable. <laughs> they fucking funny. I, I I love those guys. And that's what Wilbon was saying. He was like, looking at those guys coming back. He's like, I'm praying Clay comes back. The same Clay, right? Cause he was like, he thinks Clay is like one of the most underrated superstars he's ever seen. Right. Clay never gets enough credit for how good he is. Yeah. Dang, big baby, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to get you back on the court. I'm at half forty in the quarter, but that big boy chasing me around. <laughs> yeah, I fucking love Clay. <laughs> but that's a thing. I mean, and I I initially came on the the air saying, um, you know. We need to make the playoffs this year because, you know, Clay will take a playoff team and get us into contention, but we can't yeah. be a non-playoff team, get Clay back, and all of a sudden be in contention. But yeah, you can. I don't know, man, because a lot of these losses, we first of all, we stopped getting these blown-out losses, which is yeah. good. We, we were definitely competitive in everything. We all okay, by the way? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're competitive in every game now, and we just lost – Two games that I thought were very winnable. Um, yeah, with with Steph both playing your, like with, this, with man. the top two bigs out too. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the thing because I think you beat Dallas both games if you got your bigs or San Antonio. Because Dallas defense is terrible. This is right. It's it's the worst I've seen all year. Right. I've God, seen. I love that uh, they're. I love that they're not good. <laughs> I just love it. People love that bandwagon, man. <laughs> I love it. I know. My fucking roommate was like. Dude, I love Luka Doncic. <laughs> Luka Doncic is my favorite player. Luka yeah. Doncic is going to be the greatest player of all time. And, like, I haven't heard a peep from him <laughs> all year about well, Luka He's Doncic. looking for his new team. Right. <laughs> no, he's back on the LeBron bandwagon. Well, LeBron's amazing. So, uh, that bandwagon, that bandwagon's not full. I know, right? <laughs> uh, the loss to Dallas, though, when Steph had 57, which yeah, is hurts. so heartbreaking because I just love those performances, and you really want to cap it off with a win because they'd be signature games for him if, if 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 we came out on top. But we didn't. But I think, you know, if Clay's there, man, because – Win that. I, you know, we just need some – we just need some consistency on on the offensive end. I mean, I, I feel like – A little more consistency, like – Far as I think Wiggins has been the second most consistent offensive guy, right? But like uh, Uber's been up and down all year. That forty point game was nuts, though. He was hitting everything. He was feeling good, right? <laughs> but that's the thing. We 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 talked last time about how I'm like I don't know about Ubre. Maybe Lonzo Ball's better for us, you know. You lit a fire in his ass. But and then he had that great game, <laughs> and then I was like, okay, let's see if we can do it again. Then he had a bad game. Then he had a good game, uh, and it's like. Yeah, you don't know what Kelly Oubre is going to bring on the offensive side. Defensive side. I mean, oh, his you know, energy on the defensive side is always there. Yeah, but um, so that, you know, that's kind of concerning. And then, uh, so it's just, man, if Steph had just a, one more piece, man. Yeah. One more offensive piece just yeah. to spread the floor a little bit. But even then, they're double teaming him and triple teaming him, and he's still yeah, getting still through shit. still killing him. Yeah. It's, it's the new shoes, man. Yeah, I know. I when them. are you going to buy those shoes, man? Well, I looked them up and they're like 165 bucks. God I'm like, damn. Uh, Why? Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, Steph. I'm, I thought you're supposed to be a man of faith. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus doesn't like poor people, Eli. I thought you knew. God damn it. Give me your. You're hungry. You're poor. Come on, Steph. I want to buy your shoes. Anyway, um, the the white ones with the gold strip. Those are fire. Um, Yo, I like the ones, the colorway he had on uh, that first game against Dallas. I don't even know what they were. They're like black and like uh, that little. What is that that goes across the bottom? It was like pewter, I think. <laughs> so you know, yeah. But that, those last five games was kind of tough, bro. The only loss that like uh, like losing to Boston is not that bad. Boston's a quality team. But the way the Mavs are playing, you kind of want to beat them both times. Right. I know. But that was like it – wasn't it like a tough call? Can you tell me it was like a tough call towards the end? Yeah. yeah. Thank Zingas you for was watching out of bounds. all the games because it's your out job. Of bounds, uh, yeah. I'm <laughs> trying to raise a family over here. I'm First of all, I mean, <laughs> listen. we There was some, some laps. That, that, like We didn't play a perfect game by any stretch of the imaginations. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, there was – first of all, you fucking – 
Luka Doncic got bailed out on two plays because he did the fucking James Harden where he leaps forward into the player oh, yeah. and gets to the line three times, which fucking pisses me off like so much because that's not a basketball move. If they if they if they jump over you and they're close enough so you can go straight up and hit them, I'm okay mm-hmm. with that because that's illegal. But when they're you know two three feet ahead of you. And they jump, and you get to just get bailed up by the line. I don't know why. I thought he stopped. I thought they stopped doing that. Well, then Steph tried to do it later in the game, and they said it was uh, a tr- uh, up and down or whatever. Because yeah. he, it's a, it, if it's not a natural shot motion, I don't think they should ever call it. It's just so so annoying. So that was six points to them. Then, uh, like right at the end of the half, fucking Brad Wan or no, not Brad Wan. Um, uh, the other guy, uh, Kent Bazemore, who I really like and has been playing really well, and I really I, I want him to anyway. But like he he fucking jump he leaped towards Hardaway Jr. and bailed him out at the end of the corner, got them another three points, and then at the end of the game, uh, yeah, they missed a ball. It fell on the line. K- KP gets it and dishes it out to Luca. They don't call the out of bounds. Luca sinks the dagger three, and it's like, God damn. Hey, something like that should be re- uh, reviewable. But because they didn't call it, since it's a non call, you can't challenge a non call. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I don't get it either, but um, yeah, just like uh, just a backbreaker. Uh, they definitely got bailed out. Luca Doncic is a bitch, uh, and I hate him. <laughs> but. <laughs> I like how you just casually say you hate players, man. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, uh, I hate them. Uh, but anyway, so, you know, um, those yeah. were, I mean, yeah, those were tough, but. Very tough L to take. Um, um, but like, let's see. You but sit- yeah, these are all winnable games, especially once you get our number two option back. Because I got to say, we'll, we'll, we'll end this segment with this. We'll end this portion of the show with this segment. Uh, do you, I'm. Getting a little worried about Andrew Wiggins, um, just because if you look at the year for the year, he's thirty seven point three percent from three, and he's 40, which, is, which is pretty good. Yeah, very good for him. I yeah, think. very good for him. And then forty six point four percent from the field, which is also, again, also good. Yeah, very good for him at seventeen and a half points a game. I'll take it. I'll take that all day. Yeah. Uh, and he was shooting lights out, and I, and he's still playing good defense. Um, so I can't get too mad. Uh, but I, you know, at first I was like, has he come alive? Like, is he actually like a good shooter if he's not asked to carry the weight of the whole team on him? And if uh, you know, and if he gets open looks or whatever, I I, I don't know. But his last few games, um, like last night versus San Antonio, thirty five and and point seven percent from the field, not great. Uh, twenty per twenty percent from the three point line, atrocious. Um, the game before that, thirty three point three percent from the field, zero percent from the three point range. Uh, against the loss, the second loss, the against the loss in Dallas, he actually shot really well. But the game that they won, um, thirty eight point nine percent from the field, twenty percent from three point range. In the loss to Boston, twelve point five percent from three point range. Thirty like so, his numbers are going down. Yeah. But it's – I don't know. The season is so long. <clears throat> so you're going to have a slump here and there. Unless you're the great Michael Jordan who never missed a shot. But outside of him, <laughs> everybody goes through these little slumps. And um, I'm, wor- I'm okay I, I, with the slump. I, I, I'm not I'm, too worried about it. I'm worried about old Andrew Wiggins coming back. That's what I'm worried about. Um, well, like, what? I'm looking at his, his career numbers now, man. He's always been around the mid-40s as far as, like, field goal percentage. And then, what, three-point percentage, uh, low 30s. Like, 30 to 33. So, he's actually having a career year shooting, period. Which isn't a surprise. He's on a, he's never had a player as good as Steph next to him. Right. So, I think he's he'll be good. I think he'll worried. be fine, but, like, Wait a few more games. If this, if this turn, this a uh, little. What, I'm not worried little yet. Slump. It's something to keep an eye on. Uh, now, now Ubre, I'm worried about him. Maybe Bazemore should start in his place. Right. Well, I actually learned a little bit about. So Kent Bazemore uh, could have gotten a better contract, but he went with the veterans minimum. We're, he's only getting paid. Well, what is it, the veterans minimum? Like three, three million or something. But he could have gotten. I mean, I think he got paid eighteen one year. Why five. you take less? He got a side chicken. Um, 
in, in San Francisco? I think he just wants to play with Steph Curry, man. I think he just wants to play with fucking right. Wardell Stephen <laughs> Curry Jr. All right? Why did Dale name that man Wardell? <laughs> Is Stephen his middle name? Yeah. War- <laughs> and that's his father's name. His father, Del Curry's real name is Wardell Stephen Curry. Oh, so Dale's just a nickname. For for Wardell. Oh, shit. I didn't, I didn't know that. So Stephen Curry's full Dale name for is real, for Wardell real. Stephen Curry Jr. Yeah. He goes by Stephen. All the motherfuckers can shoot. I don't know. I don't know how Wardell Senior did it. <laughs> right. Yeah, and his brother can shoot too. Yo, his brother's shooting uh, better percentage of stuff this year. I think. Yeah, but he doesn't have fucking five defenders coming. Sometimes. All right, all right relax, Eli. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. It's insane. <laughs> it's insane the amount of attention he gets. But yeah, that's he just changes the game. But so yeah, I really listen. I think Andrew Wiggins is definitely in their um, long term plans. I am more concerned with the uh, the bigs being hurt than Wiggins. Well, than Wiggins shooting slump. Yeah, but I hope because like like right now looking at the standings, what uh, I think Phoenix was. Let me see, let me go. Phoenix is fourth. Right. Well, we can catch. Them. I think I think Phoenix is fourth. Yeah, Phoenix is fourth. We can catch. And them. then four through eight is separated by two games, bro. And then if you go four through, what nine, ten, eleven. Separated by eight games. It is a struggle. You need all these motherfucking games basically to get some space, just some breathing room. That's what I'm saying. To get in the playoffs, man. Because, like, we I think, I think that should play. be the goal. That should be the goal this year just to get into the playoffs. Of course. Now, once Clay but not, comes, not in the playing tournament. So, get get the sixth seed or higher, right? That's what we're going for. Yeah. I think we can – we're in eighth right now. We can catch yeah. the Spurs. I think we can – I think we're better than the Trailblazers. I think we're better than the Suns. I, th- I, I think all those teams in front of you – you're clearly better than, except for uh, Denver, and you're not high on Denver. Nah, not this year. I, I think Denver. I think and, Denver. And Portland's playing really good right now, and so are the Suns, and so are the Spurs. I mean, there were, I, we're all at about that level, but I think that yeah. if Steph keeps improving, keeps playing lights out, and the whole team keeps improving, uh, you know, we'll we can maybe get back into the race. Um, speaking of. Uh, well, let's let's take a let's take a, a little bit of a break uh, and hear from our sponsors, and then we can get into who are we liking so far, and um, and what's going up on this on these next on this homestand coming up. All right, all right, go down. Hey, fellas, we're in the thick of the winter, and the storms are brewing. It looks like one to three inches are in the forecast. When you trim that hibernation bush that's been taking place in your pants. Say what? (laughs) Luckily, our partners at Manscaped specialize in products to make sure you're walking around town with beautiful snowballs. Manscaped is here to provide you with the best tools for your grooming experience. Offering precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, I gotta say as, uh, as, as the winter, you know, months, you know, progress, you know, sometimes your junk can get cold and maybe you want a little, uh, female in there to make you maybe warm them up, but sometimes they don't want to if it's not looking good. So, you know, I've been trying to, I've been trying to keep it nice and tight, you know, I've been trying oh, yeah? to keep it, yeah, I've been trying to, you know, I'll do a little, I'll do a little, uh, Curry 30 action with my pew. <laughs> oh, do... that is a bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do, I'll do all sorts of stuff to keep it, <laughs> keep it surprising, uh, using the lawnmower 3.0, which is the best hygiene tool trimmer for the modern man. Because of their ceramic blade and advanced skin-safe technology, your snags on your snowballs will be reduced. Reduced. Not altogether get rid of. So please be careful. You ever nick your balls when you fucking trim your shit? Uh, yeah, one time. I think that, that might have been the last time I trimmed them. I'm like, I'm out the game, bro. Right. From now on, forget it. <laughs> Derek's like, I'm just going to have a coral reef down there. <laughs> and it's your job to find the pearl. Uh, the trimmer is waterproof, so you can trim in the shower or jacuzzi. You ever trimmed your balls in a jacuzzi? Jacuzzi seems a bit nasty. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's a communal area. <laughs> right. That, like, there's no drain. Okay. People go there to relax. You get <laughs> in the shower to clean yourself, so I don't have a problem with shaving in the shower. I haven't been in a jacuzzi in a minute. Uh, I was in one uh, this summer. When we went to the beach. 
He's guy, man. He's I was fucking... going to get my dick sucked in there, but her dad was in the room next to it. So I was like, nah, you know what? We're going to play it safe. <laughs> God damn. That, that's like one of my biggest fears. Um, I can't, it's like a dad seeing me with a, a hey, dog. Hey. Right. Uh, although now that I'm dating a Spanish girl, maybe it wouldn't yeah. be a big deal. It'd be like, you go. This is life. Eh? Hey, I am from Europe. Yeah, you do this. Yeah. Uh, Europe people are much more relaxed about that stuff. Right. They're like, hey, you're pushy. Uh. <laughs> How do you think she got here? Uh, okay. You like it a pushy? Eh? Good job. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's my impression of her dad that I've never met. All right. Uh, Manscaped. Uh, Manscaped's uh, performance package is the best buy of 2021. The performance package comes with the new and improved Lawnmower 3.0, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Trimmer, uh, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag. Uh, have you ever noticed how nasty nose and ear hair is? In fact, 79% of partners polled admitted that long nose hair is a major turnoff. Which is I I, I yeah. as I'm aging, that's the worst. That I see the nose hairs coming out. Yeah. I see the I mean I'm it's all it's yeah. coming out everywhere. Growing up as a young boy. Uh, it was this guy at church who had the longest nose hairs I've ever seen. And it wasn't like he was going into his mustache. He had no mustache and just some long nose hair sticking out. Yeah, it's gross. How can you not notice that? Like, honestly, how can you not be like, I just, you know, I don't oh, know. Oh, I think you notice. I think you just don't give a fuck. Anyway, take care of the nears and nose hair, uh, the near hair, the nose, the near hair, the nose hair and the ear hair. And you might as well use the best tools for the job. Uh, which is Manscaped. And the bundle also comes with the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner. Uh, the Crop Preserver is an anti-chafing ball deodorant that you make your balls smell nice and make you feel like your testes are uh, walking in a winter wonderland. I didn't realize that there's different deodorant for your balls and for your armpits. I just use the same shit for both. Yeah, I usually do the same I, I, I'll just do under my armpits, and I'll give a quick rub to my balls with the, the old spice. I always it. put the guard on. <laughs> uh, the Crop Reviver is a spray-on toner for your balls. It's made with soothing aloe and witch hazel extracts. Oh, boy. That will make your balls <laughs> look up at you and say thanks. Toner? Is that like is that like bronzer? Yes. I- <laughs> Keep that tan line away from my ball sack. Guys, I know. And listen, I know that some of you who are listening may be white. And maybe part of you has always wanted a black cock. Which you'll never... <laughs> which you'll never have. But you can't have black balls <laughs> with the Crop Reviver. Anyway, don't get cold this winter. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code with the code uh, brawl at manscaped.com. They also have a ton of other amazing men's hygiene products on their website from disposable mats for your pubes to foot deodorant. Uh, 20% once again, that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com with the code brawl. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code brawl. Thank you, Manscaped, for making our winter wieners look so good. Yes, Manscaped. Yo, shout out to Manscaped's writer. That lead-in was amazing. <laughs> Yo, does the Manscaped have a ball koozie or a test koozie? Uh, well, they have um, they have some briefs that I guess might keep your. Uh, keep they your need shit. Come, they need to come home with that test that test koozie. Yeah. Anyway, um, so uh, that was fun. Oh shit. Uh, can we can we uh, pause it one sec? Sure. All right, so we we back from out of space. We're back. We're back. We're back. Back from I'll out of space. Back. So yeah, Andrew Wiggins been playing great. Uh, I, you know, I'm worried about the shooting slump, but that's okay. Kelly Oubre, yeah, I don't know. I'm, well, you're a warrior, man. I get it, man. You not only are you I'm a, a warrior, warrior I'm a you're a warrior, warrior too. Because <laughs> I want us to be the best as possible. Draymond Green's playing really great. I think they she should play at at Small Ball Center more often. Um, Eric Pascal, his assists have been. Off the chain. Like I know, dude. 11, uh, 15, and some crazy shit like that. Over Draymond is in the past. hot with the passing. Dude, he looks like a He's not rebounding worth a goddamn. But who can, he can't <laughs> jump anymore. But goddamn, he's passing like <laughs> Magic Johnson over here. Yo, I didn't notice like he like like his legs look like they're shot until you said something. You say he can't jump anymore. And I was watching. I was like, wow, he's really, he's really uh, bound to the floor. Right. 
Yeah, it's, it's it's weird, man. That's why when he dunks, though, I go nuts. <laughs> he had to do one of those stretches. He got the old man dunk game now. I love it. He's got the old man game. He'll like barrel in and then just sort of like flick it up. I love it, yeah. dude. I love it. I but, love Draymond. But he does. He orchestrates the offense and the defense. Right. Yeah. And, and he's and I guess he does. Uh, he does a lot of like film session stuff. Like he'll just like watch film by himself, and yeah. then he'll send clips to his teammates to be like, "See, this yeah. is how you can be better." Like he really God, has bet, a hand in in in. I bet. I bet Aisha Curry hates him. Why? Phone rings at four in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you got <laughs> you'll stuff you up. <laughs> <laughs> But he's playing great. Uh, Kent Bazemore, I really like. I want him to be in the future. Yeah. Brad Wanamaker is really struggling from the field right now. He had that he, one he's just a defensive guy, though, I think. That occasionally hits threes, right? Yeah, so you're talking yeah. about the guy that was with the Celtics last year, right? Yeah, but he was – But he was. I mean, but so, I, I, sometimes I question his, his decision-making because sometimes yeah. he'll barrel into the lane – Try to get a layup. I'm like, bro, you are so short, and you do not have the handles or the speed. He's <laughs> like, my shoulders are wide. Right. I don't know, man. Uh, so that'll be something to watch on. Yeah. It's, that's, it's very interesting. Y'all got a lot of um, – how many small fours you think you got on the team? It's a bunch of them. Just want to make a fix that mold. We have a lot of Bazemore. Forwards. Eric Pascal. Uh, Pascal fits that mold. Uh, who else? Who Wiggins is- could be a small forward. Pascal was playing so well for us for a while, but I feel like teams are kind of figuring him out. Well, didn't he get hurt for a bit? Yeah, back spasms. Yeah, I don't know. Like, your back fuck with you, man. I don't know if it's still bothering him or not. Um, but he's been doing well. Um, you know, somebody who I want to see, I think should get a real contract. Damien Lee. Oh, my bad. No, he already has one. He's 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 there. And I like Damien. He's been, oh, you're talking about the guy that's been playing. Juan Toscano Anderson. He, yo, he's a good like you have, like the Warriors got a bunch of hustle players, man. He's another one of those guys. He's he's a, he's scrappy as fuck. Scrappy as fuck. Grew up in Oakland. Um, <laughs> oh, that's why he's playing so hard, yo. The Chronicle uh, wrote some nasty little thing about um, uh, what's his name, Van Gundy, uh, Stan, Stan Van Gundy, or Jeff, because no. Stan's coaching again. No, 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 Jeff Van Gundy, Jeff Van Gundy. Uh, so. Mike Breen is is and and him are covering the game. I think against um, I think against Boston it was that game. Yeah. Um. And you know they had a, a second to talk about Juan Toscano Anderson. Then they just talk. He has a great story. You know, undrafted. Um. He has a great name too. What is that name? He should be it's right. like an he actor's be an name. Actor, yeah. <laughs> uh, went to Mexico for a while. Played in the G League. Is now worked his way up, and he's big and he's physical and he's grabbing rebounds and all stuff. But anyway, he wears number ninety five. Yeah, and Mike, which Green, is a weird selection, right? Mike Unless Green, you play defensive end in the NFL, <laughs> ninety five is probably pretty popular. <laughs> Mike Breen was like, uh, he wears ninety five, which is an unusual number, but he asked for ninety five because he lived on ninety fifth Street and uh, he just wanted to rep his neighborhood and his home and and all that stuff. And then Jeff, Van well, you Gun- can't cut him now. And then and then Jeff Van Gundy was like. All right, well, uh, if I was playing in the NBA, <laughs> could I wear 165? Because that was my address growing up, 155 yeah. Berkshire Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> which but I that's thought, such a Jeff thing to say. It's funny. Which I thought was funny, but it's like, they ruined a moment that they were shouting out one. For, bah, 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 bah. I'm like, oh, come oh on, it's funny. Yeah, yeah, like, relax. You know, what, you know what the time it is when Jeff's up there? <laughs> yeah. They're the best. They're the best reporting team. What, uh, Breen, uh, Jeff, Breen and, and, and Jeff uh, and Mark. And Mark, yeah. Mama, there goes that man. Yeah, I like when they get back and forth about because you know uh, he coached Mark in, at the Knicks. I like when they get in the back and forth about Mark not playing defense. That shit's funny, right? Yeah, um, that's. I do think that's the number one. Um, I basketball like basketball on these on site uh, on uh, like uh, commentators of the game and then TNT's halftime uh, crew with Chuck and Shaq and uh, Kenny. And um, what's his name? The great Ernie. That's the best in studio. But yeah, right. the other ones. I, yo, that's so good. The, they're the best play call, like on the court thing. I love it when um, uh, like a big guy will like barrel into the lane and like get a layup, and Mark Jackson's like, "What do you do? That's a big man. You have no other <laughs> option but to get out of the way." And then Jeff, and then Jeff is like, "Do you want to win?" <laughs> What are you talking about? You stay in front of him if you want to win. But that's just me. Like, I like how Mike uh, always agrees with the refs, and Jeff is never on board. Right, I know. <laughs> they got good chemistry, man. They do, they do. I like them a lot. Um, and that's why Jeff can't get a, co- a head coaching job again. Why? They don't want to break that shit up. 
No, and I'm Mark kidding. too, probably. Like, well, Mark has some other issues. Like what? You know the story about how him getting fired from uh, Go State? No, this is good. Uh, well, I know that he got fired he's a, because cause he's a Christian man, and he's he's like uh, I think he said some comments about homosexuality. Oh, there w- there was that, but no, 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 he didn't get fired because of that. He got fired because you know this team was coming together, and then he put it together. He put it together, but then you know you can't be building towards something and then get. I think they got like swept in the first round by the Clippers or something. Mm, I don't know. I think it's political, bro. They got bounced. I think it's political. No, it's because it's because because it's not because he's not a good coach. He's a good coach. Not good enough, I guess. Uh, it's funny how the if black you, man if, is always not good if enough. You have, <laughs> if you have a team that's good enough to do something in the playoffs, and you get look what happened to Doc Rivers. I, think, I guess that's a bad example because you're talking like, about black. That's also it's like it's like um, it takes time. Sometimes it's not going to be right away. I think Doc got fired too fast, especially consider how. Like after uh, the dust settled, I hear about nobody on that team wanted to play in the bubble at all. Right, <laughs> nobody. Right. So and it's like they just get like it's very rare you put a team together and the first year they win everything. Yeah, because it's you got to do some gelling, man. Right. Which is you know part of it, but I don't know. I don't know enough of it, but I thought it was some extra, and I think it has to be some extra because like Mark Jackson is actually a good coach. Right. That was his first stint with the Warriors, and the Warriors went from being bad to going to the playoffs. Like and they were ascending, so I don't know. Right, I don't know. It wasn't like he hit a brick wall or something. But I thought it had something to do with that. Either way, I love Steve Kerr. Oh well, he's, I love a, he's Steve a great Kerr coach. Too. Yeah, he's good. He's really good. very good. And like, dude, he he studied under the best man. Yeah, it's, um, like, uh, it's like the Black Mamba from Kill Bill. She studied under Pi May. Of course, she was the Black Mamba, and he's funny. Yo, Steve Curry. <laughs> like, I don't know how you not have a sense of humor and be coaching. Oh, especially in these interviews, on the on-court interviews, it's like, uh, uh, <laughs> can they ask the dumbest questions? Uh, yeah. like, <laughs> uh, they've done it. The defense has done a good job of bottling up Steph all night. Is there any? Is there? Uh, is there anything you can do to get him some open looks in the fourth quarter? And he's like, I don't know. If you have any ideas, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. Watching, I forgot what game I was watching the other day. They and uh, Reggie Miller said some dumb shit. What? I think the best player on that team was not doing well. He's like, yeah, you got to get him involved, right? I'm like, what the fuck is that? Of course you want to get your best player involved, right? right? It's I like, know. but I got to get what they're doing. They're doing a job. They got to feel time. I guess. Um, but, uh, but yeah. And then I guess uh, big news on Thursday, James Wiseman is going to be reevaluated. Um, so we'll hopefully get him back. I'm wondering if they're going to choose. Throw some tape on that fucking wrist. Right, and put him out there. You need right. some rebounds. You need some, need some uh, some rim protection. And he needs to. He needs some playing time. I don't know if he starts though. Do you think he starts? No, nah, think- I'm guessing he probably not. Well, Kevon Looney's not back, right? No. So you kind of have to, right? Or I guess. no, or you keep his. Steve Kerr is very uh, anal about his like rotations and stuff, and he doesn't change yeah. unless he has to. So if you yeah. can go back to getting him his play the second half of the first, play the second half of the third. Played some of the fourth, you know. Uh, yeah. I think he'll do that. Um, but you think some of it is uh, him playing him into shape? Well, he's already in great shape. He needs, if anything, he needs to put on more size. You think so? Well, I'm not, I'm not talking about like uh, I'm talking about as far as like, like endurance. Yeah. yeah, I mean maybe, but I think a lot of it is just like he's a rookie and he's in the wrong place a lot of times. And like, yeah, he does look lost. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like getting Sometimes. in position for rebounding. It's getting into position for to take to get the lob at the right time. Like a lot of yeah. it, it's not just position, but it's like timing. It's I mean the Warriors' offense is fucking nuts. He's fucking nineteen yeah. years old. Like yeah. there's a lot on his plate. But um, but uh, yeah. I mean we did that James Wiseman piece the other week about you know all of his stats compared to like you know some of these great players. Yeah, he, he's like you got to be comfortable with where he's at as far as like a rookie. Right. Yeah, decent numbers right now. Right. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I should be excited to get him back. Um, what's, the, what's the word on Looney? What Looney? What, what happened to him? What did he hurt? He twisted his ankle really bad, and I haven't heard much about when he'll be back. Um, he'll, he's he's going to – oh, fuck – 
he's not going to be reevaluated until February seventeenth. So we still got at least another Oof. week. And I, so, I, so he'll I miss, imagine that he'll, he'll be, miss at minimum uh, what? So seventeenth, they'll probably see if he'll he's ready to go for that Miami game. Right. And I'm gonna, so he'll miss at least three games. Right. Um, but that's okay. He got he. I just feel bad because he gets injured all the time. But he's. He's one of those guys that, like, I don't – when he's out there, I don't worry about him. You know what I mean? He always – I mean, he's not flashy, but he just makes the right call. He doesn't turn the ball over, you know? Yeah. Like, he's just rock solid. Um, and this is going to be an interesting stretch. Um, we'll probably record on Tuesday looking at the schedule. So, we'll have three more games to uh, to look at. Um, uh, you got a revenge game on the schedule. <sighs> Eli, we should go to this Brooklyn game, dog. It's right down the street. We can't. We should sneak in. Right. <laughs> we know there. Uh, I think. Do you think we can beat the? How are the Magic playing? They're not playing that good, right? They were playing pretty good until Markel Folks got hurt. As far as I re- I can like recall. Let's see. Let's see what these guys are doing right now. But like, regardless of how they're doing, I think you, we can you guys them. should beat them. I yeah. think we can beat them. Uh, Miami was playing bad, but I think Jimmy missed a lot of those games. But well, he's, we'll, he's back now. That's gonna happen. We'll have to do a game preview for that because we're not gonna record um, after that game. I think we the the Cavs are gonna be interesting because they're so big and we're so small. So that'll be interesting to see. But they're so bad. I know. <laughs> they got Sexton and uh, a bunch of other guys. Just a guy. What they, what they call that when it was just a guy? Uh, another guy. What is? Damn, I forgot. It's like uh, some some meathead talk. Orlando is yeah. Orlando's like nine and sixteen, bro. They're right. pretty bad. They're pretty bad. Good. Yeah. So so we'll get. Well, you, uh, and you the Cavs they, are pretty bad too, right? Yeah. What's their record? Right around they, the same. They're uh well. They're ten. Them and, and Miami are right there together. So right. We, so we should beat two bad. I hope we beat these two bad teams because I don't know this Nets game. I don't know. I don't know. But hopefully Durant will still be uh, going through protocol. No, he should be back by Saturday. Aw, oh, shucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. But the thing is, they don't play any defense. But the thing is, Lo, that fucking offense is like a high-octane vehicle. Well, we got our So own. you guys you guys could be high. We can be a high-octane. Uh, did I say we? The Warriors. <laughs> you become <laughs> yeah, a die-hard warrior, man. Uh, the Warriors are a high-octane if. It's always like a if. Right. Maybe if, if Steph Oubre, if, if Steph plays lights out and we get a fucking another monster game from Ubre, yeah. or I'm still waiting on, on a on a monster game from Andrew Wiggins, like a thirty point game or yeah. something. Because he has that. He, in he's him. been mid twenties. He's yeah, been he, mid twenties, he but he's never, yeah. If he has a monster game and Steph has a monster game, we might be able to pull yeah. it out. But that all would these, be you insane. have to hit a, a majority of the of these open shots you're getting. Right. That's exactly. the thing with Ubre. Ubre's getting a lot of open looks. But outside that Dallas game, he's been missing a lot of them. Every time that he shoots early in the cl- shot clock, or and every time he just barrels into the thing, or like gets the ball and does like a dribble thing and then tries to shoot it, I'm like, why? Open threes and pick yeah. up fucking passes from Draymond on cuts. Like yeah. you are not. Yeah. I don't know who you like, think you are or who you want to be, <laughs> but we do the motion offense in Golden State. And the only person that's yeah. allowed to fucking just take the rock and do what they want is Steph Curry. Yeah, keep the ball moving, man, and you'll be fine. You're going to get open looks. Right. There's no need to take a bad shot on that team right. with Steph taking all that uh, attention. Exactly. And it with, Dr- with Draymond being able to dribble and dish on any, like, big that's guarding him. So we got these next three games. What do you think we're going to do? Two and one? Uh, Three and no. Oh. Yeah. I'm calling it right now. I like You're going to beat – Brooklyn. You said that would be. <laughs> uh, fuck yeah, let's do it. Three, what what did gonna I say go last time? I think I missed on that Dallas. But uh, we're going to catch him off actually, guard. I take, actually, I take that back, man. Well, it's hard with the injuries, man. Durant might be might be uh, 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 rusty. Rusty. Have you ever seen him rusty? Like really? Have you ever seen <laughs> Kevin Durant rusty? Even when like he like he wasn't sure if he had the Achilles right, and he sat out all those games, and he came back and got injured. Before he got injured, the most potent offensive weapon on the court. Right. It's, I've never. Seen, it's it's kind of nutty. So I don't think he'll really be rusty. But you just got to hope that our defense is going to be that bad. 
But like Wiseman's out though. That takes a lot. No, he'll be back by then. I think he'll be back. He's a young kid. He's yeah. nineteen. He's gonna yeah. be back in there. But it, will he be rusty? Yeah. But like the thing, the good thing about having him on your team, Eli, is like he's just big as hell. Right. So you have to always worry about that when you go to the cup. Like with him out, Kyrie Irving might just go bananas with drives. Right. There's nothing to make him stop. So if he's back, I think you guys. No, nah, I'm not gonna like. What what is my record? We're gonna record? win. What, I like it. What is my records on picks? <laughs> Am I at least five? We've been pretty good. We've been pretty good. The only time last time you said that we go three and one with this Texas road trip, I'd yeah. say two and two. Although I was getting real nervous that we go one and three. And and oh, so you were right. You, we did two and two, right? Yeah, we did two and two. Um, but what um, I, I said, we're going to sweep uh, Dallas. But yeah, I, I want James to get back because uh, Lamelo's balling out, and I really want James to win Rookie of the Year. Uh, and uh, mm. I don't know. I, I mean. You can miss a game and still win. Well, it's either. like it's it's different with big guys, right? It's because like the guard, it, like Lamelo's. Every time he's on the court, he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot, right? And Wiseman, unless he does like the offensive rebound, he needs to be more of a, if he's more of a monster offensive rebound inside, right? He could do it. He could catch him, right? Um, but I just love watching him play. He's so he has such a chance to be special. Yeah, you haven't had anything like that on the Warriors. I know. Since, like, what, Chris Webber was the last very good big? Right. I mean, and we had, we've had we had bigs in the past, but they haven't been – they've been shot blockers and rebounders. We've never had somebody that could be, like – Nothing dynamic. Yeah, like a dynamic big dude, Giannis yeah. Antetokounmpo douche. So I'm really uh, – I'm excited for him to get back, and I'm excited for these next couple of games. I think if, if we can get – if we come out 2-1, and one, that's at least spreading our – you know, we'll hopefully – you know, extend our get get up in position a little bit in uh, the standings, and if we can beat the Nets, oh boy! I will. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking two and one, but I wouldn't be too surprised if you beat the Nets because the Nets have been dropping games to teams that aren't like uh, top tier. Oh my God, I know. Uh, I, I think that's the only Nick thing they've Ray been losing. Had the fucking funniest take. It's like because they what, lost Nick the, Nick Wright had a funny take. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's just such a smart. He can be such an asshole sometimes, and he's just that's like why I don't like him. And he's like, and he's like, you know, he's like the Nets dropped one of the Pistons, but like, what do you expect? They didn't have Kevin Durant. Like, how can you possibly stop Jeremy Grant and a Plumley brother? <laughs> uh, low key, Jeremy Grant is good. Right, really good. And ask Denver how good he is. They miss him like a motherfucker right now. I know. Yeah. But, like, the Nets can't guard anybody. Eli, me, you can go out there and get 15. All right, maybe 10. Maybe not you never see 15. my jump shot. Oh, my bad. <laughs> Eli from downtown. Brick, brick, brick. Bang! <laughs> um, wait, wait, this on. Anyway, this has been uh, Warriors Brawl. Uh, go Dubs. And let's go That's get, right. let's right. go go get these three wins. Let's, get, let's, let's go Dubs let's and let's tear get some more Dubs. Let's tear off three fucking wins. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, see y'all next time. Peace.